Okay, so, yeah, so first again, happy birthday to uh, Pierre. <laughs> uh, and in fact, the more correct title would be heck algebra with not necessarily equal parameters, because as a, as a question of Dennis, uh, but uh, I think it is shorter, I just had to be shorter. <coughs> so, <coughs> uh, so I want to uh, start with the bar group. So, so W will be a bar group, uh, and it could be uh, possibly affine, so either finite or, or affine. And then it has um, some uh, Coxeter Tietz uh, generators presentation. So S, S there are some generators SI <coughs> and relation SI square equal one, SIJ, SISJ, SI, etc. Cetera, equals SJ and there's some some numbers here <coughs> for I different from J. Uh, I also want to assume that I'm, I, I'm uh, given some function on this set of indices with values, positive integers. <coughs> and this would satisfy L of i equals L of j if S i and j are conjugate in W. <coughs> What? The number of factors. Huh? Oh, and it, actually, if it can happen, that m is ij is infinity, and then you don't have any relation. If m ij happens to be infinity, then you omit. It doesn't doesn't make sense? Then it's omitted. <coughs> Okay, so then, uh, so there's a, this has a group algebra, and the Heck algebra is a deformation of this group algebra. So, so it's H, it's an algebra over the ring uh, V, the inverse, V so indeterminate, <coughs> and has uh, generators uh, Ti, I from I, I and I. And relations, we generalize this, so Ti t uh, plus, plus this. <coughs> this is zero for every i. And then Ti, Tj, the others is ex exactly the same as before. Uh, so this algebra is also called Ivahori Heck uh, algebra. <coughs> uh, and in this algebra, uh, you can introduce for every uh, var group, for, for every element in a, in a W, you can introduce uh, element T W, which is T I one, T I n, where W equals S I one, S I n has and minimum possible. And then this well-defined element of H, and then TW form a basis <coughs> over A, uh, uh, basis of, of H <coughs> over this ring. Uh, so the, the case of, so the, when I talk about unequal parameters, unequal parameters, this refers to the fact that this function L can be constant. That, that's the case of equal parameters. And L, uh, Li can be, is not, can be non-constant, then, then it's unequal parameters. Uh, so, <coughs> so, the, so this algebra is introduced by Vahori. So first example of, of such algebra, so how it arises in representation theory, so suppose you have G, this uh, reductive connected algebraic group over algebraic closure of FQ uh, with the FQ rational structure. <coughs> uh, 
<coughs> then I suppose B is a Borel subgroup defined over FQ. Uh, then you can consider the induce the uh, unit representation. <coughs> and then the endomorphism algebra of this induced representation has been shown by uh, Iva Hori in 1965. It, it is canonically isomorphic to a Hecke algebra uh, of, of suitable VAR group. Uh, in which V is specialized to square root of Q. <coughs> so, some, so this for, for some. And here the parameters, so the parameter fu the function L is, uh, so L, L is constant uh, if, if G is split. And its L is almost constant, so it it's, has very, very few pos possibilities. So very close to be constant, if uh, in general. So, for example, oh yeah, now I see the problem with this blackboard. So this, <coughs> well, so. <coughs> so, for example, if you have. Um, some uh, well, orthogonal group, uh, as, so G, G is S or N. If, 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 the, if it's split, then the Hecke algebra will have look like this. So parameter is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. <coughs> so, uh, but if, if it is, uh, sorry, if take, that, that's a 2N. If take um, a non split orthogonal group, then it will be level two. So this L function can, can, be, can, can have non-constant values. But you cannot have anything, you cannot have one, 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 and seven, for example. That, that, that doesn't appear in this picture. So, some, so only, only very small, uh, so, so also all, in this sense, almost constant. <coughs> Uh, so now, uh, um, so now I want to say something about unipotent representation of, of this group, and, and you see that from from that theory you will get also Hecke algebra in which parameters are, are very far from constant. So let's see. Let's <coughs> see. So. So we, we define, so consider Frobenius map um, on G corresponding to ra this rational structure. And then, uh, uh, so following uh, paper with Delin and myself, so this is 1976, <coughs> we can define uh, some, uh, some following variety for every Bar group element. So uh, we consider all Borel subgroups. <coughs> uh, such that uh, B and F of B. Well, two Borel subgroups always have a relative position, which is a bar group element. And you want to prescribe this relative position. So this is a sub variety of the uh, flag manifold. And the, well, the group G acts on the f set of Borel subgroups, but the rational points of the group G will preserve this sub, sub, this, uh, sub variety. <coughs> so, so the conjugation by GF acts, so this acts on XW. <coughs> uh, and then it, it also acts on, on the cohomology groups, et al. cohomology groups. <coughs> as a linear, a linear representation. <coughs> and then any, any representation of GF, which up, you can take uh, algebraic closure also, any representation of GF which appears in, in one of these uh, representations is, is called unipotent. So if a reducible 
<coughs> so for some w and some i. <coughs> now, uh, for user representation, there is a concept of uh, Caspidal. So, that, so uh, I recall, so if you have user representation row of GF, you, you say it's Caspidal. So <coughs> uh, if the following is true for every parabolic subgroup of G uh, other than G, and which is fixed, which is defined over FQ, uh, if you take the you can consider the unipotent radical of this parabolic and rational points and take invariant set, set of vectors that this has a access trivial, acts trivially on rho, then this space is supposed to be zero for, for every such p. <coughs> and uh, these are the most uh, uh, difficult representation in some sense to understand. And then you can also combine this, with this so this notion of unipotent and caspidal representation. <coughs> so, um, so I want to say something about how to. Uh, yeah. So, so this so unipotent representation have been classified in, in my paper, some, some 1977, 78. So the classification. So I will say, I will only say what happens for a symplectic group, because that is. Um, uh, typical of general case. <coughs> it's already already uh, complicated. <coughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so 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 I, so what's the classification of unipotent uh, Caspidal representations for G equals sp to n? <coughs> so there are two cases. If n number n can be of the form k squared plus k, where k is uh, greater than zero, and in this case there is exactly one unipotent Caspian representation, upwise morphism. So exactly there is uh, exists one. <coughs> so we call it rho rho k. And second, so this includes, if n equals zero, this means group is a uh, trivial group, uh, one element, then it has, that is hospital, unipotent. So if n is not of this form, uh, then there is no uh, unipotent hospital. <coughs> uh, so now you can, uh, you can do the same thing as you did there. In, type we, in that case, we induced trivial representation from Borel subgroup to GFQ. But instead of doing that, we can induce uh, Caspian representation from a parabolic group to symplectic group. So, so we, can, <coughs> we can do the following. We can take uh, P to be a parabolic group in SP2N such that the Levy part is isomorphic to SP2M cross uh, some product of multiplicative groups. Uh, G, uh, there's a different M, maybe uh, to R. Uh, so the number of these factors will be N minus R. And we assume that this, this, uh, this P and L are, are split over FQ. So they're, they're, they're FQ, FQ uh, stable. So, so these are defined over FQ. <coughs> uh, then we can uh, take, uh, you can try to induce, so take this representation rho k. Yes, assuming that, assume, assuming that n, this number n is of, of this first kind, uh, then this will have a unipotent Casper representation. And you can take that one and tens tensor with the trivial representation on the on this other part, on the rational points of this group, and then, then lift that representation to the parabolic group 
in a natural way and induce from PFQ. <coughs> Then, so this, this, this is a representation which is uh, a generalized that induced representation. So, so you can again look at endomorphism algebra of this. So I take all GFQ endomorphisms. I think that should, should have said that also. And then the uh, theorem is that this is canonically isomorphic. to a Hecke algebra of the following type. You take, um, you take some uh, group, group which has diagram of this form, so, so type B. Uh, the number of uh, uh, edges is n minus r. And the length function is 1, 1, 1, and here it's k. <coughs> so, in and is, so in particular, you, in this way, you can get uh, k arbitrary large because k here it's uh, because in, you, you you can take in this here you can take k arbitrary large. <coughs> uh, and then, Yeah, and after having this, you can, you can say that the set of unipotent representations of uh, SP2N <coughs> up to isomorphism <coughs> is canonically in bijection with the following set. So you can take uh, union over all numbers K such that k squared plus k is less than n. And then you can take irreducible. Ah, but by this Hecke algebra is also v equals square root of q. So it's specialized to v equals square root of q. <coughs> so it's irreducible representations of that part of that Hecke algebra. <coughs> So these are all observation up to isomorphism. <coughs> so, so you see that uh, to understand all unipotent representations, it is not enough to, to understand the algebra of, of uh, equal parameters or even, even almost equal, but you have to understand uh, much, more, much more complicated ones. <coughs> Uh, and the same, 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 same uh, things apply in, in the, for periodic groups. Now, uh, now I should say, for Hecke algebra, there are, um, uh, at least in the equal, equal parameter case, there are uh, three, three known models in representation theory. So, the, what, so, the t so this at least in affine, so now I talk about affine Hecke algebra. <coughs> And I, I won't be very precise here, but so, so the first one is, is what I just described. So you take uh, some unipotent Kastler reputation induce, perhaps to a periodic group, and then take endomorphism algebra. Then it will be, you get, so, so one is taking uh, uh, induced endomorphisms of induced representation induce of a unipotent caspidal. <coughs> so, okay, but then, but then there are other two models where, um, which are more geometrical. So there's one model in which, ah, but, but the, if I, I, here I'm only talking about equal parameter case. And then the unipotent caspidal has to be a trivial representation. <coughs> now the second one, uh, you can, which has historically known, you can use uh, uh, perverse sheaves on, a, on, on some flag, flag manifold or, or, or flag manifold cross itself, which are equivariant <coughs> respect to action of a group. Uh, and you can organize this perverse sheaf as, a, as, some, as an algebra. 
so, so there's a picture using perverse sheaves and theory of, and including notion of weight, theory of weights, so the Delin theory of weights, theory of weights, <coughs> on a flag manifold, which can be affine, cross itself. <coughs> now, in this, in this theory, you will get uh, Heck algebra in which V is not specialized to square root of Q, it's so V remains in, indeterminate. So V is indeterminate. <coughs> and there's a third picture in which you use uh, basically some, in, so in, it's in, in terms of the Langlands dual group. So in, you can consider, uh, uh, again, uh, you, well, you can consider um, um, equivariant K theory, basically. Equivariant K theory of some uh, variety of triples of, anyway, so, so, it has, so you can use the geometry of the Langlands dual group and use equivariant K theory. And instead of the theory of weights, we use action of C star. Uh, and that, that will give you this parameter V. Complex group, yes. Yes, right, yeah. <coughs> so, so here use, use equivariant K theory and C star action. So the action of, so, so this parameter V appears in, these three pictures appears in, in three different ways. Here appears a number of elements in a field, finite field. Here it appears as something which uh, tells you what weight you have. And here it tells you how, how C star, what representation of C star you have on, on some one dimensional space. <coughs> uh, so, so this third picture is very useful. Uh, it has been used to construct, uh, to classify that you representation of affine Hecke algebras. That's what you need. But the second picture has been used to get uh, some, some more fi finer information about affine. You don't need it to construct representation, but you can, you know, to, to get basis for representations. It, the, the second picture is, is very useful. <coughs> uh, so now, I, in a case of um, unequal parameters, uh, this, uh, this number one makes still, still makes sense. You can t take unipotent cusp lines instead of one. This number three also, also makes sense. Uh, it has been used to construct a representation of alpha and other unequal parameters. But number two is, is missing. So, th and, and that's what this lecture will be essentially about. So, so is that number two uh, has been uh, understood until now, I think. <coughs> <coughs> uh, so, so actually, before um, going further, I want to uh, to show what, uh, so why, why, why it is, so what, what kind of application would would could we get if we, if we had such such a theory? <coughs> So I, so I will uh, assume uh, for time being that um, you have equal parameters. So, so the algebra H has a has an involution but called bar involution, which takes T S the, the T I the T I inverse and takes V to V inverse. So this uh, un unique uh, ring involution with these properties. <coughs> Um, and then uh, I think, in, uh, so there's a claim by well, in paper Karl Dan and myself, 1978. We observe that for every W, there's unique element CW such that CW equals TW uh, modulo 
uh, the V inverse, so modulus some lattice, uh, this CW, CW equals CW, so up to, up to things of this form. <coughs> and also CW is fixed by bar involution. <coughs> so CW form uh, again a basis. Over, uh, uh, over this ring. Uh, so now we can uh, we can try to multiply uh, elements in this basis, and then we get some uh, structure constants. <coughs> And similarly, we can multiply the original basis uh, and it turns out that uh, so one one property which is uh, very remarkable <coughs> is that h both 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 these functions have only uh, um, so so there is some number. Uh, so this also belongs to v to the n times z v inverse, where n is a uh, absolute constant. It's a constant. So for all all x, y, z in in the bar group, uh, you have such a formula. So there is a number n <coughs> such that for any x, y, and z. Uh, this, this structure constant has this form. For yeah, for fine value group is trivial. For finite case is trivial, but affine value group is, is not trivial. <coughs> uh, and in fact, the same, so same is true for F. So in fact, that you have to prove that first. In fact, if you know for, for, uh, for F, you, you can I immediately deduce uh, H. Uh, because of, of uh, this way CW and TW differ. <coughs> and this type of property follows because in alpha value group, because uh, basically because alpha value group, there's a very large uh, semigroup inside alpha value group in which the, the uh, TX multiply perfectly. There's no, there's no error of any kind. So in this case, F is one. So for large, large set, this is true. And then you can deduce that if you go outside the set, you, you, only, you only have a finite error somehow. So that's why, why this holds. <coughs> and then uh, having this, you can define. So because of this, it makes sense to define some function for, for every element. Um, some, there's a function, which uh, not natural numbers. Uh, yes, OK. Um, <coughs> so there's a function z goes to a of z from w natural numbers such that h x y z uh, belongs to v of a z and uh, So uh, such a function certainly exists because of this property that I just said. And then we can define H. Then we can, set, we can look at the coefficient of this A of Z, so call it X, gamma X, Y, Z inverse for some reason. I, and then pl plus lower terms, lower powers. So this will be now an integer. <coughs> And then we can define a new new algebra uh, in which this uh, this structure constant will be this gamma. 
So this is a new algebra. Uh, so it has a basis, so it's over integers. <coughs> has basis Tw and multiplication is Tx Ty equals sum gamma xy the inverse Tz. And then the, the so the, the, this one, one claim is that this algebra is associative, which is entirely not obvious, and, and has also has unit elements, also not obvious. <coughs> and uh, this, this uh, to, to prove these properties, uh, you you actually need. So all, all the, all, all, all what I did here is is uh, completely elementary, but to prove them you need. Uh, this uh, geometrical model for the uh, Afanek advanced, so in particular I use uh, uh, a million times the, the Vail conjecture <laughs> I think he used uh, just all, all the time. So, so po various positivity properties you, you, you can get from Vail conjecture. <coughs> um, and also, for this algebra, you, maybe I will not give a clear formula, but, but uh, you can define then also some canonical algebra homomorphism. So, so this algebra you can call it J. And then there's a canonical algebra homomorphism <coughs> from H to J, which becomes isomorphism if you extend the scalar to, to rush to field to the Q of V. So sorry, this is goes to Z, Z, J tensor this ring, Z of V V inverse. <coughs> so this is a canonical algebra homomorphism, which is, at least if, uh, in a finite case, this, this uh, isomorphism over, uh, if you extend the scalars. So, so, in part, so, so that's what I meant by you get some finer information about uh, in representation theory. For example, in particular from this you will get that the Heck algebra for arbitrary, for, for um, uh, parameter Q is isomorphic to Heckelman parameter one because both both of those will be identified with, with this uh, fixed his Higgs A. So such isomorphism has been known to exist but not but not in a canonical way. And not 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 uh, with and this gives a uh, very economical one. You don't need algebraic clo closure, uh, etc. <coughs> so now everything I said here uh, it makes sense for for uh, unequal parameters with and has has unit element. Yeah. So this involution is it can be defined. It's also defined in unequal parameter case. And this existence of this uh, basis CW can be proved in the same way in in a unequal parameter case. <coughs> and this uh, H makes sense, and you can uh, this this property is again true for unequal parameter case. Uh, and so you can define this algebra. Uh, but he, he, but you cannot. We don't know how to prove that it's associative or, or has unit element, because you are missing uh, some ingredients in the proof. And so, and I still I still don't know how to prove it. But uh, but what I want to show now is 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 how to find some uh, ge geometrical setting in which this, these algebras can be constructed in in frame, framework of Weber sheaves. <coughs> So, Okay, so now we, we, we fix, we, we uh, have G is as before, so it's a productive connected over FTU bar. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, then we, we have a VAL group, which is W, and we have a set of indices for the simple reflections. And then if you have any subset of, of this uh, set I, then there's a set of corresponding set of parabolic groups of that uh, type. So pa pa classes of parabolic groups are classified by subsets of this. So this parabolic set of parabolic subgroups type J. So P empty will be Borel subgroups. <coughs> so now I want to consider the following variety. I take all pairs uh, P, uh, G of P. <coughs> So, so this variety is denoted by ZJ. So I take a parabolic group in a fixed class, and I take an element uh, in, uh, in G mod UP, the unipotent radical. <coughs> uh, so this set can be decomposed uh, into pieces according to double cosets, so W, yeah, so maybe, maybe I call also uh, WJ, it's a subgroup uh, of W generated by S, SI, uh, I in J. So that's a <coughs> So here W runs through uh, double cosets of respect to WJ. <coughs> So that's the obvious part. So you, you can, uh, namely, uh, if you have uh, some point in ZJ, you can look at, at the relative position of P and GP, G inverse. Uh, and this will be some element of the VAL group. Uh, and it is well, uh, well defined up to uh, the WJ. So, 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 so this gives a way to partition ZJ into pieces. <coughs> uh, now I want to consider some uh, some diagram. Uh, so I assume that uh, J is contained in J prime. So then this and this are defined. And in the middle, I take all uh, pairs P, G, U, Q, such that P is in PJ, uh, Q is in PJ prime. Uh, P contained in Q, and G, G U, Q belongs to uh, G mod U, Q. Uh, then there's an obvious map uh, uh, C and D. So C, uh, C takes uh, P G U Q to um, P uh, G U P. So this, this is well defined. This map is well defined. Also, uh, the map D takes uh, P G U Q to Q Q G U Q is also well defined. <coughs> uh, and then, then uh, we can we can get uh, we can look at the derived category of co constructible sheaves, <coughs> uh, and we can get a functor from this to Z J prime, which we call F. J prime, and it takes some object to, so first take its inverse image, and then take its direct image. <coughs> uh, yeah, and so that's one structure I need.
Pardon? Ja. Uh, there's also a structure, some, something uh, convolution, some product structure. So from D, so this goes as follows. So you take, you can have a diagram ZJ cross ZJ, uh, Z uh, tilde ZJ. So this, these two are already defined. And in the middle, you take triples uh, Q. Uh, P, P prime. G, U, P. G prime, U, P prime. Uh, this in P, J. This in P, J. This in G mod, U, P. This in G mod U P prime. <coughs> and uh, it should be true that G uh, P, G inverse equals P prime. <coughs> so, so, so they're all, 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 all those. Uh, and then there's a, uh, these maps are defined D1. Uh, no, no, I think it goes the other way. So on the B1, this will go to uh, P, G, U, P, P, P prime, G prime, U, P prime. And under this map, it, this will go to uh, P and G prime, G, U, P. So at this point, you have to use the group multiplication. So, uh, uh, What? The, the yes. Yeah, and the, uh, so so because because of this equation, this 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 has a meaning because if you replace g prime by something, uh, multiply by something unipotent radical of p prime, it, this coset remains the same. <coughs> Okay, so the, then uh, if then we define this as follows: you take uh, two objects, and then you get uh, a convolution is defined by B V one star uh, B two uh, lower star. <coughs> Uh, okay, so now, now I want to define uh, what I call unipotent. Uh, yes. Yeah. <coughs> and this one is also associative. So it's tra I mean transitive. The other one is transitive. The other, yeah. So now I want to define uh, some something called unipotent character shifts. Uh, on ZJ, so I want to define this concept. So there's some, there'll be some simple perverse shifts on ZJ of a particular kind. <coughs> so first I assume that, so first I assume that J is empty. So in that case, uh, I, 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 I have to deal with Borel subgroups, so, P, so uh, Borel subgroup and uh, <coughs> So then I have a map from ZJ to, so Z empty, to a product of two flat, uh, to, to P empty times P empty, which takes P um, B G U B to B uh, G B G inverse. And then on this space, I can consider um, Sim the orbits of G action, so the inner uh, value group element. And I can take the corresponding 
intersection cohomology complex. For, for each var group element, I take the, the intersection cohomology complex defined by that orbit. And then I can take the inverse image under this map with some shift, and that will be, again, inter intersection cohomology complex. And, and those are, by definition, the unipotent character shifts for j equals mt. So in this case, it's, it's a very simple. <coughs> now, in, for, for general g, for ge general uh, uh, j, Uh, I, I do, I, I apply uh, this operation, this F in induction, so F empty J to some uh, unipotent character shift. And then I get a complex of shifts. And then I take anything, anything which appears in some perverse cohomology of that. So I can take uh, perverse homology of this, and then I take any simple constituent, simple constituent, or <coughs> and this, and uh, th this, this will be, by definition, the unipotent character shifts on G, GJ. And then you can show that uh, this, uh, this operation preserves this class of unipotent character shift. If you apply, if you go from Zj to Zj prime, you start with the unipotent character shift, then you get some complex, and again, all, all the simple, all the simple component of the perverse commodity shifts will be characters, unipotent character shifts. <coughs> so, so, so this form a, a reasonable set. So, so, so I want to, I want to uh, use notation I, um, J will be the set of isomorphous classes. <coughs> on ZJ. Uh, okay, so now, now I want to consider um, K, KJ will be the free uh, module of a, so I can take rational functions in one variable. So uh, then, so let's say QV, QV vector space uh, with basis uh, the, this character shifts, uh, I, I, J. So I take formal combinations of, of uh, character shifts with coefficients, rational functions, so I could take Z, V, V inverse also. So I, I would show it whatever I want. <coughs> uh, yeah, then, it, it, then uh, this uh, function F, J, J prime uh, can be extend, gives rise to some uh, linear function from K, J to K, J prime for any J containing J prime. Uh, so this define actually for, to define this you need you need the notion of uh, weight filtration of a perverse shift uh, mixed perverse shift. Uh, so what v this v yeah yeah it's it's shift and and, and, to, and together this yeah so 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 what you actually do so basically you take some uh, character shift. You regard it as a, as a mixed complex of weight uh, zero. Then you, you send it to sum over all a i in i j prime. Take sum of j h minus one j v h. And the multiplicity of a pri a one in you take h p J, uh, and then you take what you called before uh, this FJJ prime of A. That's 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 uh, 
the comp in terms of the Dirac category and take the part of the, the sub quotient of weight H. <coughs> so the, all these, all these, all these uh, um, formula is a polynomial in B and V inverse, integer coefficients. <coughs> Uh, and and so, so we have this 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 thing, and then these again form uh, uh, some linear functions which are tra transitive transitivity property. No, no, no. In this case, the, the I don't have any weights, but to define this function, I I, I choose uh, I, I just. Uh, make them of weight zero. So I just. No, no, no. He, here they are not of weight zero. Only, only a has, only a has weight zero. <coughs> a, a has weight zero, and then a one is. Uh, I, I, in this side, I, I regard a one just as a Cartesian shift without without weights. Yeah. yeah. So, so. Uh, and I can do the same thing with convolution. Sim similar, similar thing in convolution, and I get an operation from kj cross kj to kj. <coughs> and, and actually, this, this defines uh, uh, algebra. So this becomes uh, associative algebra. Uh, but except it's not it's not clear that it has unit element. Uh, is it, not is not unit element is not clear. <coughs> uh, so now next. Um, so then I want next I want to define k bar j. <coughs> it will be k j. Uh, modulo, I, I want to factor the uh, image of uh, this FLJ of KL for any L uh, other than J. <coughs> By the way, all these all this vectors are fine dimensional, so no problem. And, uh, Yeah, then, so then there's some uh, th theorems which are not, not uh, so I will say some theorems. So first, uh, no, b before I say, so K, Kj itself will be, I claim is direct sum of subspace is K, Kj W, W in the double cosets. And that is because any uh, character shift uh, if I look at the support of that, it will intersect. Well, we have this partition of ZJ, and the support of any character shift will intersect exactly one of these uh, pieces in, in something open in the support. So each character shift gives rise to some unique W. So this gives a direct sum decomposition. What? Uh, but I don't need that in any case. Hmm? No, but I, don't, I just look at support. Just, just a support. I don't. <coughs> now, uh, this, this set contains uh, uh, a, a subset, which is normalizer of WJ, model of WJ. That, that is uh, always some particular uh, nice subset, which is a group part of this. And if I take the image of these things under the, in, in KJ bar, what, what will happen is something quite remarkable, namely that if W is not in the subset, then this piece goes to zero. And those the, for W which, which are in the subset, the images of those continue to form a direct sum. So that, that's, that's a non-trivial non statement. So I claim that k j bar is a direct sum of k 
kj bar w, w in And this one is defined as the image of, uh, of, of this. Normalizer of WJ modulo WJ. So this is naturally subset. Uh, so that's one property, which is not, I, I think it's not, not clear at all, but that I'm proved. Uh, another property is that uh, KJ was algebra, but, but this one is an ideal. You can prove that this one is a two-sided ideal of the algebra. And so KJ bar is uh, itself an algebra. So it's assertive algebra. And then you can prove also that it has a unit element. Th this one has a unit element. <coughs> and, uh, but for unit, if, you, if you did all this over, not over Q of V, but over Z, V, V inverse, then it would not have a unit element. Unit element only exists if you have uh, if you have these denominators, <coughs> so so now I, I will state uh, some some thing again going back to the symplectic group to uh, so the following. Uh, so, so basically, I claim that this this thing is a is a Hecke algebra with un unequal parameters. That, that, that's a, and, and this uh, natural decomposition according to uh, var group elements. So like a TW basis, the line spined by the TW. <coughs> so that, that uh, except it can be, in most of cases, be zero. So for, for if I take J at random, this will be zero, but for very exceptional choice of J, this will be a, a Hecke algebra. And it will have unequal, and it will have unequal parameters. And this gives the, um, uh, so this gives a geometricization of the Hecke algebra that was promising. And one in particular, it has also this anti, this involution that used, uh, it, it, it gives, it's also defined, it's given by Verdi duality. It, it, Verdi duality uh, is defined on Kj, and it, 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 it preserves this sub, sub, subset, because it commutes, Verdi duality, it essentially commutes with FLJ. FLJ are involved only proper, some, some inverse image under some smooth thing and proper. Uh, so, so there's a very, so there's a very anti linear involution on this, this thing. Uh, but this, yeah, this actually not, what I'm saying is not exactly true. So, in exceptional groups, you, this, this can sometimes contain uh, two Hecke algebras together somehow because. Because in, in that case, the unique, unipotent cartan is not unique. There may be two, two of them sometimes. And then this, this will, this, you will get here the two algebras to, together. But in classical groups, this will be really a, a Hecke algebra. So, so now I, 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 so I, I um, don't, so, so this means that we can probably up, uh, uh, well, you can start studying this algebra from this point of view and hope, hope, hope that you get something interesting. Okay, that's all. Um, are there any questions? Yes. So you said that to get the unit, you need denominators. Yes. Does, so, to, so to speak, the lowest denominator. Yeah, it probably has something to do with, so in an equal parameter case, you don't have the denominator. It's only have it in this case. It has something to do with, the, uh, there's some unipotent Casper representation that uh, which has some dimension. is a polynomial in Q, and I think you have to divide by that dimension, I think, basically. And if, if that, that you work out is trivial representation, then you don't have to divide by anything. So that, uh, that's what I think, I, I, I don't know for sure. Yeah, well, so for example, for Hecke algebras 
of, of the standard time equal parameter case, the also, or, or with almost, almost, uh, very, almost constant uh, thing, then in that case, you, wait, you can interpret geometrically to look at Hecke, to look at geometry for a bigger group uh, together with an automorphism. And so you can, that, that's how you can understand them. So I think something similar should apply here. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so, if you if you if you are a symplectic group, for example, uh, then uh, this algebra will be uh, zero unless uh, unless. Uh, so, 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 suppose this uh, thing. Uh, so, it will be zero unless J happens to be um, uh, of this form or only, and also uh, the number of. Uh, number of no, vertices is k squared plus k. So, uh, unless you satisfy this algebra with zero, and if it is like this, then then each of these kj bar will be one dimensional. E each of these species is one dimensional, and this is a algebra with parameter, the last parameter q to the k. Uh, yeah. So, is that, is that a question? Is, is that what you asked? Well, yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, as I remember, in the case of E8, there was some monotomy, in fact, or where did it disappear? Yeah, that, that is, uh, that's, why you, that's why you need square root of Q, not Q. That, that's why I'm all, all the time uh, using, and if you have square root of Q, then it's no monotomy. For E7 also, yes. 